We had driven down from Trollstegen and boarded the ferry to go to Eisdal. Then we would drive over the mountain to Gairanga. The views are beautiful here in the sunshine. Norway has a very good ferry system that is actually government subsidized. One of the reasons for that is the nature of the land. A fjord is not a lake or a river, it's an inlet of the sea, and the end of it may be a hundred miles away, creating the need to cross it. The deep fjords generally mean tunnels are not possible. The ferry system is therefore an important part of life here, and at this time of the year, a very pleasant experience, especially for us tourists. Then over the mountain to Gairanga, renowned for its spectacular views and having the reputation of being the most beautiful fjord in Norway. On reaching the viewing platform, we were blessed with a clear day, but severely hampered by the fact that the ferry to Helsilt was about to leave, so our shots were very rushed. Then a quick drive down, and we just caught the ferry in time to see the Vikings on their way to raid Britain. Maybe. We then had what turned out to be the most enjoyable ferry ride I ever had in Norway, with the sun behind us and a clear, perfect day. As we left, we saw that Gairanga has a mini version of Trollstegen, down which we had actually just driven. We uh, just came over, we went to Trollstegen, then we've just driven down to Gairanga. We missed the visit to the Union Hotel, but we managed to get some shots from the top. We're on the ferry now to uh, Helsilt, where we're going to look at the waterfall. The boat was packed with tourists, and as we travelled through this famous fjord, we were able to get great shots of scenery all around. The cliffs here are as high as 3,500 feet, and the waterfalls coming down are all around 800 feet. There's a certain kind of majesty about them, powerful. The famous Seven Sisters being the main attraction. So majestic, it looks almost like it's in slow motion. This is real time. They're called the Seven Sisters because the legend is that opposite is the Suta. So they dance playfully down the mountain and the suitor responds from the other side. The suitor, however, was rejected and turned to drink. And he is clearly seen, devastated, and hitting the bottle on the other bank. Enjoy the sights with me on a beautiful summer's day in the most famous fjord in the world.
We're heading for Hellsilt, and the famous waterfall there quickly comes into view. It's also spectacular, but in a different way. We disembark, roll off the car, take some pictures, and then enjoy the falls. Imagine the poor salmon having to swim up this one. It seems Sherlock Holmes was here. Well, actually, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, he was. Then the inevitable picnic at Hellsilt. It's an amazing place for a picnic, with views of Gairanga Ford on the one side, and the waterfall on the other. So we came here from Gairanga and will now go overland through Strin to the Brixdale Glacier, stopping along the way to shoot. Guna with his camera, Nate with his iPhone and me with my Sony 200. When we arrive it's already 8 o'clock at night. It's been a long day. We've been on the road from early morning and we have about three hours of walking up to the glacier and back down again. We follow the river and get some nice shots. The green glacial color of both glacier and river are due to rock flower or rock that has been ground fine by the glacier. Even time for some fun shots with the slow shutter. The melting snows mean there's plenty of water cascading down the mountain. The rushing mighty sound of waterfalls resounds through the valley. As the glacier melts, many waterfalls are dancing down the mountain sides, as it were in a dance of freedom. The water enslaved in the glacier for thousands of years as ice, now making a triumphant dash for freedom to the worldwide ocean that awaits in the fjord. The roar of the waterfalls being their victory shout. I uh, just walked up for about 20, 25 minutes to here. To me, this is the most kind of majestic, powerful waterfall that, that I've seen here. They're all different. Some are amazing, but there's something about this one. And uh, we thoroughly enjoyed the walk up here in Brixdale. The glacier really became well known as the only glacier that was still advancing in the 60s, but in recent years has continued to recede. This marker marks its greatest advance, the boulders behind standing as testimony to the fact. There are some interesting huts on the way up, with Norwegian-style roofing.
smile. The glacier now ends on dry land and a large chunk of it broke off and crashed into the lake below five minutes after we left. We knew of it because there was a thunderous noise and as we ran to look we could see parts falling off. It was probably the part to the right that looks precarious. So at 10 to 11 at night we still had over an hour's walk down and a two hour drive home. But it was a fantastic day.